Yes? So hello, everybody. This is Mike Fidosin speaking. But before I begin, just a couple of words about us. I'm a Glenn Score member, philosophy doctor in technical sciences, and a passionate programmer with more than 10 years' experience in development of web services. My name is Karat Kushayev. I was involved previously in uh, HIT and Glenn's projects. Right now, I'm developing Glare project. I have been involved in developing uh, in OpenStack Upstream for two years. Okay, so today's session will be dedicated to a new service in OpenStack called Glare. Actually, this service is not new because it has been incubated in Glenn's repo for more than a year, as far as I remember from Liberty Cycle. But now it's absolutely standalone project. It has own repo, own client, and even own spec repo. But actually, there are plans to bring it back under Glenn's governance again to make both projects have benefits from each other. And by the way, the name Glare came from Glenn's artifact repository. So what is Glare? Glare is a service that provides a unified uh, catalog of binary data along with its metadata. Such structures are often called artifacts. We wanted to respond to community needs and create a unified repository of artifacts for all OpenStack projects, because currently in OpenStack there is no single solution in this regard. Some projects store their files uh, in databases, on GitHub, uh, directly in Swift. For Nova, there is a service glance, and so on. Nevertheless, none of these solutions do not eliminate issues of uh, artifact versioning and data immutability, and of course, do not offer convenient means of storing and searching. A key feature of Glare is the ability to manage different artifacts of various nature, from Nova images and Docker containers to hit templates and database backups. At the same time, it doesn't matter what artifact type you use. Glare always provides a unified interface for working with them. This flexibility is achieved through the plugins. Operators or users can independently describe their own artifact type and connect it to Glare. After that, Glare will take over the entire process of handling this artifact type and its connection to the system. To define new artifact type, we use slightly modified library Oslo version objects, which already gained its popularity in OpenStack. And for this reason, I think it shouldn't be very hard to implement new artifact type because it's done in Python and in familiar environment. Moreover, currently uh, several artifact types are already included in Glare. We call them blessed artifact types. They are images, hit templates, hit environments, Murano packages, and Tosca templates. And soon we are going to add torrents for ironic project. Okay, so now let me describe other useful uh, Glare features. First of all, it is artifact versioning, which means that artifact is supplemented in, with the version in a somewhere format, and user is able to sort and search by version. Then uh, we have special uh, dynamic filter for that. It's called latest, which literally says, give me artifacts with the latest versions only. Then we support uh, several binary objects or blobs per one artifact. From Glare's part, it allows to specify a set of such attributes. So for example, you can create a new artifact type Amazon image and specify three binary objects there. It's kernel, RAM disk, and memory, and then access them directly. If the number of similar files is unknown, like it's uh, done, for example, uh, in OVF, OVA format, or in VDI, you can specify a folder for them. Uh, in Glare, we call it blob dictionary. And put all your files inside. For metadata, Glare supports structured properties, dictionary and list, and you can specify things like di uh, dictionary of strings or list of integers, like everything. Then uh, we have this conception of dependencies and links, uh, which means that one artifact may uh, depend on the other. Uh, it's a very important feature, and we have several slides dedicated directly to this. And of course, we have advanced filtering with various operators, uh, like not equal, greater than, and so on. So now let's see how Glare is organized from technical point of view, and I pass the mic to my teammate Karat, and he will tell you about Glare implementation. Oops. Uh. So let's start from uh, the basis. What is artifact? We define artifact as some user entity represented with artifact type. Artifact, 
Just a second. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, very pre uh, okay, let's start from a basis. Uh, we introduce the term artifact as some user entity represented as artifact type. It can be glance image, hit template, hit environment, or everything else. Each artifact type defines which properties are allowed for this entity. For hit templates, it can be environment, template, template version, and so on. And of course, GLAR itself, GLAR itself introduce some typical actions allowed for each artifact, like create, upload, download, share, or delete this artifact. Uh, the properties allowed for each artifact type can be split in two main groups. Common properties, best properties are presented in each artifact type. It uh, could be ID, name, version, creation date, and a lot of other properties like status and so on. And type-specific properties. As you may guess, it's uh, just uh, properties exclusive to type, like for hit, it, hit template file, template version. For Tosca template, it's Tosca template file. For glance image, it's image version and format. Uh, each property has own metadata defined in Glare itself. It's pro uh, we introduce some metadata about properties, such as name, default value for each property, and of course type. We support most of Python types as artifact properties. But we also introduce two additional types that makes a difference. The first type is link. It documents dependency between two artifacts, and uh, uh, you can consider it as uh, sim links in Linux. So when you delete referenced artifact, nothing happens. The second type is blob property. This is the key feature of Glare. It allows to manage binary data within Glare artifact. So let's talk about it in details. Currently, there are two approaches to manage blob properties. The first approach is upload the data directly into Glare. In this case, you, for example, provide some image file or hit template, and this template will be uploaded to Glare backend. After that, all life cycle will be covered by, by Glare. For example, when you delete hit template artifact, by reference it blob file in, hit, in GLAR backend will be also deleted. We also calculate some checksums like MD5 and hours for each blob. Uh, the second approach is just to specify some external link instead of blob. It is applicable in uh, some cases when you have a file on external HTTP, HTTP server outside Glare. And in this case, it's just text reference in Glare. And Glare doesn't cover all lifecycle cases for this blob. Additionally, user must specify MD5 and our checksums manually for this file. Uh, so here you can see the example of definition for artifact. It's a real example currently uh, implemented in master. It's hit template. You can see all fields like environment, template file itself, which is blob, list of nested templates, and default environments. It, uh, this, these environments will be applied to hit template where, when user doesn't specify any other environments. As you can see, there is no such common properties like you expected, ID, name, and version. These properties are defined in base artifact, which is parent of this class. Here you specify, we specify ID, name, and our properties. We also define defaults and some filters and our metadata. We are going to prepare some documentation about how to specify properties, and we will cover all available options in this document. Okay, now we have some uh, notion about definition of artifact. What, we, what can we do with this artifact in Glare? The typical workflow for Glare artifact is the following. First, we start with uh, artifact draft. It's just some draft version, for example, of hit template. After that, you can uh, update some properties required for is this artifact. For example, for hit template, you must specify template file. Without this template file, the artifact itself is useless. So after definition 
of all required properties and uh, blob values, the artifact is ready for activation. Once it's activated, you can share the artifact with our users, so you can make it public. Of course, we support some additional actions like delete, reactivate, and so on. It's mostly based on Glenn's workflow for images. The activation and publishing is the key steps in artifact workflow, in artifact lifecycle. Uh, activation allows uh, user to tell the system that artifact is ready for production. So everybody can start using it. Uh, when artifact is activated, the system checks that all required properties are set. For example, for glance image, the image file must be specified before activation. Uh, and all properties after activation becomes immutable. So no changes to image after activation, no changes to template after activation, no changes to Tosca template after activation. There is some exception, mutable properties, because in some cases we need to specify properties after activation. One example is text. We need to specify text after activation because they can be changed. So you can explicitly mark it as mutable it, and it can be changed after activation. Uh, activated artifact, as I mentioned before, can be published. Publishing artifact uh, makes an artifact available for all users in read-only mode, so we can download this artifact, get or list. By default, publishing is available for admins only, but it is managed by policy, so it can be changed. If we <coughs> so if artifact is immutable, how can we, for example, change, uh, introduce a change for this artifact? For example, if we have hit template and some properties are changed, we need somehow deliver this update to our users. Uh, to support this case, we implemented versioning. Versioning allows uh, user to ensure that there will be only one artifact with a specific type, name, and version. We introduced several scopes where the artifact must be unique. The first scope is private. It means that you can create an artifact with the same name, type, and version within a Keystone project. The second scope is uh, public. So you cannot create any public artifact with the same name, type, version. If there is some contradiction between private and public, then private is uh, returned first. So it's like in programming local over global. If you consider uh, all these features useful, then perhaps you want to use all these features for your custom types. GLAR also provides this possibility. You can write some Python class, uh, put the reference to this class in our config, and after that, this artifact will be available in your environment. For example, you can see this uh, type. You just need to inherit from base artifact, introduce some fields, and also we implemented some uh, like a hook functionality that allows you to validate data before uploading, before publishing, before activation. For example, one useful use case is Tosca. Uh, we investigated that we can, uh, we can pass the template to Tosca parser and validate it before uploading. So we can ensure that all Tosca templates in our environment will be valid from parser point of view. Additionally, we implemented a lot of our features like micro versioning. Uh, we also support different backends because a part of our uh, system is Glance store. So you can store your blobs in uh, Swift, Ceph, or local file system, but it's only for testing. And uh, we also introduced some discovery functionality that allows you, for example, just put the reference to your class and after that, we generate the JSON def uh, definition for this class automatically. And uh, the last but not least, we introduced some additional admin, uh, admin uh, artifact type. It uh, returns all artifact type despite uh, all artifacts despite its artifact type. So it's very useful for admins who doesn't bother about specific artifact type and can observe all available artifacts in the system. So I pass my. 
So, okay, there folks, now let me demonstrate to you a couple of examples how Glare can be used in your cloud. The first example is application catalog based on community app catalog. And the second is a storage of heat plates and heat environments. So, community app catalog. It's a website that contains various artifacts uh, for your cloud. Currently, there are four types. Uh, they are images, heat templates, Tosca templates, and runner packages. In the new version, it's based on Glare, which handles all inner operations on the artifacts. And all artifacts are publicly available there, which means that each person is able to download them without registration. Nevertheless, the creation process requires uh, an authorization. It, it consists from three steps. Uh, first of all, user has to decide artifact of what type he is going to create. Let it be Tosca template, for example. And then, uh, initially, he has to specify just name and unique artifact version. After that, Glare will create an instance in database in drafted status. And Catalog will generate a web form that contains various artifact fields like description, author name, tags, and so on. Uh, user may fill them or leave empty. And finally, uh, he needs to upload Tosca template file. As Kairat said, uh, we have support of data validation, uploaded data validation. For Tosca template, uh, it's based on Tosca parser, and it validates if uploaded file is a valid Tosca template. If so, uh, Glare puts the file in Swift storage or CF, whatever, and returns uh, OK code. Otherwise, if upload failed, then Glare returns bad request, and user will have to fix his file and upload it again. Uh, and by the way, all web forms are generated automatically uh, from JSON schema for, uh, from Glare service. As Karat said again, uh, Glare is able to create JSON schema from artifact type description. And for this reason, catalog administrator doesn't need to create new UI if he wants to add new artifact type like Docker containers. Uh, catalog will do it automatically for him. The second step uh, when uploaded, uh, upload is done, uh, user activates the artifact, which uh, means that this artifact is completed and can be used in production. Glare verify that all art, uh, required attributes were filled. For Tosca templates, user just needs to upload a file. But for example, for images, he also must fill disk format and container format uh, fields. If everything is fine, Glare changes the status of the artifact to active and sends a notification to catalog administrator that this artifact may be published. And on the third step, uh, catalog administrator may manually check the artifact before publishing. And he, if he's pretty sure that this artifact is good enough, he changes this visibility to public, and this uh, and Utosca template becomes available for everyone. After publication, if admin considers that uh, this artifact may be harmful, he may deactivate it for some period of time and do some additional investigations. If everything is good, he reactivates it and it becomes available again. If not, uh, he removes it completely. So the second example is a storage of heat templates and heat environments. The main thing here that these entities are useless separately and only their combination will do the trick. And another point is that heat requires several uh, nested uh, uh, templates per one artifact and Glare should support it somehow. So let's see how it's done. First of all, for nested templates, we have a special folder, blob dictionary, called nested templates. And user is able to put all his files inside of it and then access them directly by their names. Uh, then heat template artifact type has a dictionary of links to environments uh, that can be used uh, with this current template. And also we have special uh, dictionary of strings called default ENVs, which contains names of environments that can be used with current template if nothing were specified by user. So tomorrow there will be uh, uh, the, uh, another session provided by Alexander Tivilkov and Kirill Zaitsev. Uh, as far as I remember, it's co it called something like the understanding of Glare, App Catalog, and Murana. So I believe there will be more examples, and if you are interested, you can come there and listen. So finally, let me uh, describe other features 
we want to implement in Glare in future. First of all, it is artifact sharing. <clears throat> we have been implementing our sharing model from the very beginning, and initially we wanted to have it uh, like in Glance V2. But then we understood it has several flaws. Uh, actually, there are six use cases. Uh, and two questions, uh, how artifact may be shared and with whom artifact may be shared. For, uh, how, uh, there are two options, accept and no accept. The difference between them is that uh, um, in case of accept, user has to accept the sharing before he is able to use the artifact. Uh, for, uh, for the second case, artifact will appear in his output if he wants it or not. So if you're familiar with Glance V2, you understand that I'm talking about shared and public visibilities. Then there are three options with whom artifact may be shared. It is some particular user, some role, and finally, all users. And we are going to support all these scenarios, cases in Glare. In Glance, uh, only two currently are supported. It is accept user and no accept all. And as far as I know, uh, they are implementing community uh, visibility, which actually is accept all. But I think it is a little bit redundant because it's a very special case of shared visibility. So uh, if you want to know more about implementation, you can come to uh, Glance Meetup on Friday, and I'll try to explain the solution more detailed. Then it is dependencies and links. I think it's a killer feature in Glare because it allows to combine several independent artifacts in one structure with varying flexibility. And in Glare, we are going to support three different types of relations, dynamic, soft, and hard. Soft are currently implemented, we call it link. Uh, then dynamic, they are dynamic links, and hard dependencies are, uh, hard is called dependencies. For dynamic links, uh, user has to specify some search query. And then Glare limits the output only on artifact and return it to user. For both uh, links and dependencies, user has to specify concrete artifact ID. So the differences between them are on the slide. In case of dynamic links, a user can refer to various artifacts in different time intervals. Both links and dynamic links can refer to an artifact in another cloud. So can they, uh, they can be external. For dependencies, Glare verifies that the dependency artifact won't be removed from the system. Uh, for links and dynamic links, there is no guarantee on that matter. And of course, user must be an owner of the artifact to set dependency on it. And also for links and dependencies, Glare verifies that the de uh, dependency artifact exists when this link or dependency is set. Uh, other features are, uh, it is import and export of artifact. Because sometimes it's required to have the whole artifact as just one file. As you know, uh, artifact uh, consists of several uh, binary objects, uh, blobs, and various metadata. And we are going to implement special type format, .glr, uh, which contains all artifact contents, and it can be used as independent entity. It will be possible to import your artifact from Cloud A, then save it on your flash drive, and export it on Cloud B with no differences. And in the future, it uh, opens the way to Glare-to-Glare -glare communication uh, when some Glare services are playing role of proxies for other Glares. Uh, then uh, documentation is our weak, part, uh, weak point, I, I know, and we are going to improve it dramatically. Artifact signing and verification is on the map too, but there is nothing special. We are going to use the same model like it's done for Glance images. Uh, and I think it's an important feature because it improves the stability of the system and it, it allows to provide accurate data to the clients. And also we are thinking about adding new blessed artifact types. Uh, currently there are five, I mentioned them. Uh, soon we are going to add Ironic. And also, uh, there may be Docker containers and puppets and Ansible playbooks. Uh, so there are contents, uh, contacts, how you can participate in Glare development. First of all, it is our IRC channel. 
Um, and uh, two repos on GitHub. It is just repo and its client. So, uh, in conclusion, I want to thank all people who were involved in the process of creation of Glare, especially Glenn's community, which was very generous and helpful. And of course, my teammates, Karat, Sergey, and Daria. Thank you for listening. So, any questions? Thank you. Uh, so, this project seems to be somewhat competing with Glance in a way. Kind of. And yes. my question is whether it's actually competing or this should be just uh, like an addition. Uh, to me, uh, it would be seem more natural uh, to have it uh, like extension of Glance or Glance version 3, which is probably now renamed to Glare. Could you clarify the, the strategy a bit more? Uh, I think we should work together with Glance community. As, and as I mentioned in the beginning of this presentation, there are plans to bring Glare under Glance governance again. I think these projects are work good together, and yeah, it can be additional service for Glance, but uh, we need to decide it uh, and this Glance community. Uh, from technical point of view, Glare allows to do the same things uh, as Glance. We don't have meta devs, but uh, they are not actually part of uh, image API, as far as I understand. Uh, so it, uh, I think it should be some political decision. May I add uh -huh. some uh, notes? Uh, mostly Glance is uh, concentrating on uh, image, images itself within OpenStack community, but uh, we, we are concentrating on artifacts, some storage, mm -hmm. versioning storage. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, there will be some competing feature, but once we will be mature, we will considering maybe combine or split features between those two projects. Uh, yeah, I would just add to that because sometimes, like in Glance, once you run your cloud uh, long enough, you will have a need to version your images. Mm -hmm. And that's where this fits, actually. And, for example, at least that feature would be really nice to see in Glance. Mm -hmm. Signing and all that stuff would be also beneficial as well uh, from first look. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so I would just have one more question that would be uh, about backend support. You said you will support multiple backends. Exactly. Will they be available at the same time? And will, be, will I be able to use, for example, two Ceph clusters as two different backends at the same time? Uh, we use the same library as Glens. It's called Glens Store. So there, uh, yeah, there are possibility to use several uh, uh, backends at the same time, but uh, there, will, uh, there will be only one default uh, where Glare will put all files. But then it can download it from Ceph, from Swift, from HTTP locations, and so on. So it's absolutely like in Glance because yeah. we use the same library. Well, one oh. active where you can create and uh, our uh, like a like passive where, where you can download this artifact from this backends. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. But uh, we also open to new features. So if, if you, you need, if we really have a strong use case for this, we are open to it. So yeah, please conduct. We can consider this because, uh, you know, we are no pro new project. And uh, if there will be strong use case for support multiple backends, so maybe we need to reconsider our architecture at this moment. So yeah. OK, I'll try to attend Glance uh, sessions later and uh, Glare as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a bit of a general question, maybe. Um, so I'm wondering how how do end users consume the artifacts? So, for example, if if if, if you have heat templates stored in Glare? Is it like the end user needs to retrieve the template that they're interested in and then push it to heat? Or is there going to be some connection between? Uh, 
So yeah, there is uh, a project, an initiative on heat size that uh, will add support of glare directly into heat. Uh, I don't know in what state right now it is, but actually it is. Okay. Uh, from glare parts, uh, you work with heating plates uh, through URLs. So you have an URL for heating plate artifact, and then you put your, uh, your files inside of it and then download them. So uh, upload file, it just put request there, uh, download, it's, it's get request. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we, we lack of integration at the current moment. Uh, there are plus certain plans about integration between HIT and uh, from HIT and Morana team. I think it will be very useful to have yeah. just HIT to return the template from uh, Glare and upload it in no local files anymore. Yeah, the same is applicable yeah. for uh, Morana package. Probably for any artifact, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we are open it, uh, to it. It just need to implement it on uh, our company side. And uh, yeah. yeah, if you need to use it, if you we have some guys from companies, so please contact us. We are open to new integration, to new cases. Okay, thank you. That's all. So it seems no more questions. Okay. So thank you very much. Thanks.